Welcome to Canny Cross Conversations with me, Michelle. And me, Louise, talking all things dogs, running and canny sports. This episode is sponsored by the Get Stronger Run a Faster 5K course. It's great for canny crossers and runners to improve their 5K time and keep up with their dogs. On today's episode, we chat about hydration. We've done dog food um, and today we chatted to the founder of Mammoth Dog Nutrition Systems, David, who's based in Slovenia. It was a really interesting talk, which I felt really simplified things because we do like to worry about our dogs drinking enough, don't we, Louise? Yeah, the right measurements and what, when and how, whatever they should be having it. Yeah. And yeah, I think I think David just really simplified everything and made me relax about the whole thing, particularly at this time of year, you know, when it's getting hot and we're, we're wondering whether we should take them out full stop. Um, it's, so it's good to hear from somebody who who really knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And I, I and his route into doing the dog sort of nutrition, I thought was really exciting. So you have to yeah. listen to that. But also his his the way he uses his drink. Yes. as well so he talked about that as well um I, actually I don't think we recorded that a bit I think he was we, when we were talking afterwards how he uses his drink it doesn't have they don't have to have done a sport or something it can be just a treat yeah so I thought that was brilliant um so yeah so go and have a listen we hope you enjoy and if you've got any questions let us know welcome to this week's episode of Candy Cross Conversations and this week we have David Toft with us from Mammut Dog Nutrition. So that's quite a mouthful, sorry. <laughs> and welcome uh, David, thank you for your time and thank you for joining us on the podcast. Do tell us a little bit about yourself and Mammut as well. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, about myself, I run with the dogs for about 15 years now and I started with a company with with dog supplements about in 2015 uh, mostly because previously i was working with a human supplement right. industry and when i started looking for supplements for my dogs i saw that that, that ingredients are lower quality or like second quality than to human ingredients and mo- most of the supplements for dogs are pretty much the same. Like, example for joints, elderly people or athletes take the same as dogs need it. So I, I was like thinking, why do we give a dog a less quality ingredient? And that's how it all started. Fantastic. And it's it's very true what you say. What we've been learning along our journey of doing looking into dog nutrition is it's the same with the food as well. So uh, but that's another story. But that's what we've been learning, isn't it? Yeah. So why did you well, a couple of things. Why did you so you founded the company because of that reason? Why did you call it what you've called it? I think this is really interesting. We you briefly touched on this before we started. <laughs> yeah, mammoth. Uh, that's a extinct animal mammoth in english right yeah so our region is famous for found fi- finding bones and, uh, and remainings of an- these animals so everything in this region is connected with mammoth from mascot in <laughs> kids school to different clubs uh sport clubs galleries bridges <laughs> so when i first made a sample of our product we were having like a joint trainings with other canny cross and bike curing people near the bridge called mammoth bridge so right. i just wrote i just wrote on a bucket without label <laughs> mammoth number one and next yeah. week i brought bring their mammoth number two just to other dogs to try it to yeah. even before the product was made so mammoth just stick with it i think it's a great name yeah, I like it. it is yeah it's got a lot of history there <laughs> so you you've been canny crossing for so what do you canny wait no you don't canny cross we had the, the you bike your and scooter 
Yeah, I, I was doing a lot of sport in my younger days. So also athletics. So I was kind of, that was my, the dog sport is my second, like, career. <laughs> but it's not career. It's yes. Now it's a hobby. Yeah. So in the beginning, I refused to canicross because I was so fed up with running because yeah. I ran so much in my life. So I started scootering and bike touring. And you were saying just before that that is quite is more popular over in Slovenia than it is probably. I don't know. It's quite popular here now, isn't it? It's more popular, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that the uh, UK it's really growing. Mm. Like what I see on social media and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you are like growing much faster than other countries. Oh, well, that's good to hear. It is good. To, and I think lockdown, the pandemic had a lot to do with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, maybe that's a plus because uh, canicross or bike or whatever mushing sport, you can do it alone on a road. Like agility, you need a parkour, you need a field. Yeah. So that's yeah. May, maybe a plus with the mushing sports. So what dogs do you have then and how many do you have? Because we always have to ask this question. Yeah. Uh, I still have my, f- not first dog, but my, my, my not running dog who started everything because he was, you know, like you get a puppy and he's, you go to a s- school with the dog and you teach him to walk on a leash, but he was pulling all the time. So <laughs> that's how I was introduced to scootering. <laughs> but after a year in scootering, I got it that maybe my dog likes to pull, but that's still not mushing. So I bought another dog. Right. <laughs> At the moment, I have like four Graysters and one Swiss Mountain dog, which is a house dog. I mean, all are house dogs, but the Swiss Mountain is more like uh, laying on the porch. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And have you done really well with them in in your in the bike during the scooting? Are you because there's a lot. So what you have over in Europe is a lot more competitions probably than we do. Yeah, I I try to 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 go to at least one European or World Championship a year. I I I'm never like in the top tier of competitors because I take everything as a hobby. Mm. I train my dogs on uh, locations that I prefer at home. I don't care about what the competition will be on what, what kind of terrain, what kind of track. So my dogs are never optimal prepared for the, let's say, world or European championship. Yeah. But they are always in good form for my hobby to run around or to take them anywhere. I think that's really nice to hear, actually, isn't it? Because that, that's more or less what we do. I race, Michelle yeah. doesn't, but, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I'm my just dogs, a hobby kind of crosser, so that's it, yeah. My dogs try the hardest. I try the hardest, but I'm not going to dedicate my daily routine to be in a top 10 in a European championship. Yeah. I'm okay being 15th or 20th. Yeah. And... Last year, uh, I managed to have four dogs, mostly of the same age, so I I can I could uh, compete in a four dog uh, with a cart. Yeah. But to ha- to have a team, it's so it's so hard because sooner or later one dog gets too old, or you need a younger dogs, and to run a dog of four four dog team, you need eight dogs at home yeah. and that's pretty hard to keep up <laughs> so i mostly run scooter with two dogs wow like that's my my main discipline if i say so no it's brilliant it is brilliant i think yeah. i think the problems i know we're going to talk about drink i know that but i find this fascinating <laughs> <laughs> um i think the problem obviously here is where people can actually do the bike during and do their scooting whereas we can go off and run anywhere it's just finding the the areas where they can do that. But. Maybe, yeah. I moved with my family to a new home, which is like 
we we bought a farm outside of the urban area, so it's no problem to train anymore. Yeah, that's good. But I imagine if you live in a city, the scooter or bike that's pretty hard to train. Yeah. No, exactly. So let's get on to why we wanted you on. <laughs> it was to talk about dogs and our hydration. And I suppose, um, I think you've probably given me the answer. Well, I don't know if you have. Why should we be giving our dogs hydration drinks? And is it just for sports dogs? I mean, the most important thing is that dogs drink enough. It can be water. Mm. But sometimes that's hard to 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 make them drink so much. Yeah. Because w- w- when you send me the question, like, how do you know that Doc is dehydrated? Yeah. When you know it, if you know it, it's too late. You're too, you're too late. Yeah. You're done for a week, for a month with a doc. Just take him ho- ho- home, and so that should never happen. So I usually don't even look if they are dehydrated because that, that's n- that can be that can happen, you know. Yeah. That's why you have to water them, water them all the time, before, after. Like watering is one of the most important things with dogs, and sometimes they're not thirsty. Like if it's a not a hot, hot day, they are like. And you want them to to drink because, you know, like dogs don't know that you're going to make them run for 20 minutes, like uh, in the next hour. They're still laying at home. They're they're not prepared for the activity. Because that's why you give them like a pre-run drink, which they like. So they drink it, even if they don't know it, they will need it. I hope that you understand what I mean. Like, no, exactly. The idea is that they they like the flavor of this drink, so that they're more likely to drink it. Is that right? That that's one of the important things. Yeah. So that's why I always tell, like, even if they don't like our pre-run drink, just give them something in there, like even a pate or some meat, minced meat in the water. Mm. just so they will drink everything do you have to do you have to give them that like so we we know we don't want them fed too too far in advance before they go out for a run is that the same with the drink um or or how much they drink before they go for a run is that an issue like i don't see that as an issue because they're, they're much easier to to pee, like <laughs> yeah. they, 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 they will get time to pee. You know what I mean, like yeah. Uh, and it's hard to tell, like what's too much. Yeah. If they drink a bowl of water, that's not too much. If you make them drink, like I don't know, eight liters of water, that would be too much. Yeah. But doc, doc will never drink it, and. Usually, we suggest that half an hour before before the activity, there's no drinking anymore. Right. Only peeing. <laughs> yeah. 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 You water the dog about hour before the activity. Yeah. That, that's the last watering before the activity. And then only walking him around. Yeah. Yeah, so t- so tell us a little bit about your. You've got two hydration drinks, haven't you? Pre-run. Yeah, we have the pre pre-run drink, which is used before, uh, before the activity. And I suggest only to people, uh, which dogs don't like to drink. Like, yeah. I'll be honest, I don't use pre-run drink <laughs> with my dogs. <clears throat> Because my dogs will drink enough water before even normal water. Yeah. S- some people like the the pre-run drink has some um, some amino acids which are very good for explosiveness of the dog. Mm. That's why many agility people use it. All right. Okay. But in a sled dog, 
let's say, 20-minute activity or 25-minute activity, I just don't need that. And the, uh, they are pre-fed enough, they don't need anything before the activity. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same with us. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so yeah, sorry. No, I was going to say, so So that's a sort of option. And I suppose if it was re really hot, then most dogs would have drunk anyway, won't they? I suppose it's keeping an eye on how much your dog drinks maybe the day before and sort of coming up to the, the race or the run you're going to do as to whether you use it or not. Yeah, maybe. I, be, I mean, I even when I feed them with kibble, right, that's the yeah. dog food. Yeah, yeah. I water all the kibble I give them. So uh, let's say the, the bowl, I, I fill it with uh, a proper amount of kibble and then water it with the level. So it's yeah. like a soup of kibble. So actually every everything they eat, it's with water. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good tip actually. Yeah. Uh, about the recovery, which is uh, post-workout, uh, there's two benefits. One is that it's oily, so it's a fat, which is very good energy. Because the muscles, after the activity, the first thing is they need to replace the energy. After they, they replace the energy, they start rebuilding. So you need you need a fast source of energy after the activity, and then you need the building blocks, which are proteins, for muscles to repair themselves. And the the best window is pretty similar with human, like it's one hour in one hour after activity, because because the body is craving for energy to replace it. Uh, the other thing with the recovery is it tastes to most dogs pretty good. So yeah. it's like a treat to them. Pickle loves it. <laughs> yeah. So my dogs are are going back to, to the finish or to the car where they used to get the, the recovery. Like they would run for a treat in a, in a school, <laughs> uh, in a dog school where you teach, you know, with a clicker system. Yeah. You teach, yeah. you teach the recall with a with, with a treat at the yeah. end. Oh. Pretty much the similar way does the recovery with with my dogs after the practice, the training, or after the race. So they they go they run even longer because they're trying to get back to the car for their drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They 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 are just going back to their bowls. Usually, I prepare it or my wife prepared it in the car when I'm on the trail. So when, when they come back, they go immediately to the water. Yeah. And I don't bother, even in, if they are in like uh, painting stage or like deep yeah. breathing. Yeah. I don't mind that uh, with the water. So that's not, because you see them. So at the weekend we were at Goodwood. I don't know if you've heard about that, um, uh, which is a big estate in the in Southern England. Um, and he has this big dog festival and we had a Canicross um, uh, demo, I suppose, going on. And it was hot. It was really hot, actually, for them. They shortened it. But that some of those dogs had worked really hard. And you just think, I wonder, I suppose if they're panting so hard, they're not going to drink until they physically can, are they? Yeah, th th that can happen if they're too hot. But like... The the sled dogs should not run in a too hot environment. No, if they're over overheating, you, you should call cool down the dog with a wet blanket with ice just to yeah. as soon as possible to to cool them down. Yeah, it was all done safely. It was just it was warm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, they were they were looking after the dogs, but obviously they they they're the hounds that you know run fast as you uh, as you say um no, that's brilliant so can we over hydrate our dogs no i don't think so i th i think i mean in the modern age of food dog food which with uh, enough of 
macro elements of the doc needs, it's nothing that we should worry that the doc would drink too much because they get all the needed stuff in every normal dog food. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to go in which, like, mm -hmm. uh, there are different uh, ideas what dog should eat, but mostly all, like, even if you feed raw, you know you have to add bones, <laughs> you need to add stuff. Like, if it's not a, a supermarket kibble, any other kibble than the supermarket kibble should be okay. That's what we're learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing the other thing about dogs is sometimes maybe that's a controver controversial thing, but dogs live for about let's say 10 to 15 years. If they would say to us like you will live 15 years, how many stuff would you care about eating? Like, they will not get a disease which a 70-year-old human get. So some, sometimes we're too worried about the, the, the micro elements of the dog food. The, the three blueberries in a kibble will not change dog's life. That, that's yeah. a joke, but like... You know what I mean with a yeah. dog food. That's in general. Like, don't fall for the nice words or nice icons of the passion fruit on the label. Yeah, so it's, it's all marketing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We do yeah, uh, worry a, about our dogs, don't we? A lot. Yeah, it's a lot of marketing. Mm -hmm. Definitely is. I, so I want to come back to you just because you said about the recovery is replacing energy and I get that, um, you know, because that's what we need as humans. In your pre-run drink, though, you said your amino acids are in there. Is there anything else to give them energy in there or is that just the action of the? No, yeah, it's a maltodextrin, which is the, the one of the rare carbohydrates the dogs can pr pr uh, the dogs can yeah, no, I'm, I'm, digest, you know yes. what I mean? Like, yes, sorry. <laughs> because, because, because maltodextrin is easy enough to digest for the dogs fast. Otherwise, they're, they're carnivores. They're not used to the carbohydrates. And the other, the other thing is uh, beef protein, which also can be used as a building block or hum uh, dog organism can use protein as an energy source. Yeah. So this isn't just for sports dogs, though, is it? So if it was a hot day or something like that, or, or just dogs going out for general walks, would you still use your drinks? I would use the recovery drink. Right. Like, the recovery is our, our go-to product because it's for very general use. Uh, also the whelping beaches yeah. need yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, because maybe the only downside of the recovery is the we use whey proteins, so it's it has some lactose in it. Yeah. So the lactose intolerant dogs might get some reaction and if if they get a diarrhea then just don't feed it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's something to be aware of. Yeah. Michelle, have you got anything else about hydration before we go on to other products? Because it is there anything yeah. else? I don't know really. I think I think chatting with you, I think it's clear that dogs they're not gonna overhydrate if they don't want to drink, that they, they don't want to drink. That's the whole point of giving them a tasty recovery drink afterwards that they actually want, isn't it? Um, I mean, my dog tends to drink a lot. The way we canny cross is kind of out on the hills. We go out for fun. Um, and even today it's quite warm out. So she's been kind of in and out of streams drinking. Um, so, I mean, would you ever feed your, like hydrate your dog during a run? Or I guess as long as they're hydrated beforehand, they're okay, aren't they? I mean, it depends on the duration of the, of the activity. Yeah. Like if it's a hike, 
more than a run. Yeah. yeah. Or if you, then, then sure, I would hydrate. Even for the long distance mushers, they hydrate. Yeah. But if it's a, a sprint, let's say a five kilometers, I would not hydrate. In maybe in some extreme heat, sure, I would stop, make, let them go to, into, into the water, but that would be my mistake to run into hot condition. Yes. Yeah. Like we, we, I would, I would do it, but only that time. And next time, I would stay at home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because not only the dogs should be okay for let's say thirty minutes of activity, but you get you give them the wrong uh, like learning lesson how to run, because then always start to I need to pee, I need to drink, I need to check that uh, water, I need to check that. No, we're running. Yeah, you that's not the time to do it. Yeah. So over here, and I don't know if it's the same with you, there's this is sort of people are starting to do, and there are races now, um, canny ultras. Yeah. So I don't know, so which is which is interesting. So you would then take some of your recovery. Would you take pre-run, pre-run or recovery to give them during the that? Uh, I didn't hear well what, what you started. So there's a lot of people doing their ultra marathons with their dogs now. Oh, ultra marathons. Yes, yes. sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, for during activity, I would, su- I would su- suggest recovery. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it, it, but again, it was, you... here we have like, uh, but we we don't call it. U- Hi, uh, we, we call it hiking with the dogs, mm. yeah, and that's ultra marathon because for a dog, that's more like a walk or yeah. a trot, yeah, B- yeah, because, because, uh, and dogs can do many kilometers, so that's okay, yeah. but uh, then you need to water them and water them regularly, like, don't forget about it, yeah. Let's say if it's uh, more hours, every thirty minutes you need to water them. Make wow. like a like a, or every hour make a plan how to water them, and that sometimes a lot on a dog. You have to learn how your dog is. You know what I mean? Like it might be different from a breed to breed or from a dog to a dog. Yeah, because I'm doing a big hike with my dog. In, in the UK, we've got something called the Southwest Coast Path, which goes around the edge of the, um, the South Coast. And uh, um, she's been doing like really long walks. And I haven't taken any with me. I've just used streams and water. But maybe uh, it's something I could think about to take take with me. Yeah, uh, that would be okay, especially if, for the drinks. Like if you have a lot of... Uh, stage like say one hour stages of walking yeah no it's more than that yeah yeah then it's good because it's easy to transport Mm -hmm. and the dog gets energy and still their stomach it's watering it's not like food laying down to digest yeah because dogs when they they get food they get they start to getting I'm not gonna say lazy, but that's how they work, you know. Like wolf, when when they hunt, they eat and then they lay down. Yeah, yeah. So like that as well. <laughs> the good thing, like th- that's w- w- we suggest to use recovery. You still can use water from a stream. That's not a problem. Yeah. And just the powder, you give in a bowl. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's good actually. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it because I suppose I think about using your um, stuff when I'm racing, mm-hmm. and I don't think about it in other contexts. So next time I shall take it with me and uh, use it. So that'd be quite good. And if she likes it, she's more likely to have a drink as well, isn't she? Oh, she likes it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a treat, and also they get some energy. So yeah, it's a, a win-win. Yeah. 
So tell us, you have uh, you have a couple of other products as well, which, you know, can you tell us about those? Yeah, we have the the joint mobility. It's for uh, joints, for mostly for younger dogs or for elderly dogs. Uh, it, it's based on glucosamine, like for human. Uh-huh. And yeah. uh, I, I I never really believed in a human glucosamine. I, I was thinking like, yeah, maybe my grandma, she just reads it and believes it and it helps. But with the dogs, you actually can see a difference. So it's pretty uh, nice to see that. Well, what, uh, what the you product, been, yeah, on, what, sorry. I was going to say, what have you noticed? Uh, have you had an example with one of your dogs? Or Yeah, I have my elderly, like, Great Swiss Mountain Dog, which is a heavy breed, like heavy in weight. So he his joints are like, like really getting better with the recovery. I mean, sorry, with uh, uh, joint mobility. Yeah. He's old, now he's 11 years old, which is a lot for the, that breed. And in one, he barely stood up, but now he's walking again pretty nice. No, that's good. So oh, that's great. You, yeah. see, you see the difference. That's when you start to believe it. <laughs> Well, also, you've got salmon oil as well, haven't you? Yeah, we have a uh, Norwegian salmon oil, which is, uh, we were looking for a source of salmon oil for some time, and then we found one which is uh, cold, processed, and uh, that's it. We, we get it from Norway, and we offer to our customers who were looking for the salmon oil. So what, would you just add that onto the food, would you? Sorry? Would you add that to the dog's food? Is that how you'd feed it? Yeah. yeah. I just I just pump it over the kibble or with whatever food, uh, especially in winter or in the cold days to get some extra energy. Because, you know, dog can eat as much as he can eat, like in a quantity of food. And if you wanna, if you want to increase the calories, you need something liquid, small, and oil, oil, especially salmon oil, is the perfect calorie increase. Excellent, and a, yeah, and especially when they're doing so much exercise, it's uh, exactly that's that's yeah. mostly with the uh, dogs that work or train whichever sport or are active. Brilliant. Brilliant. Is there anything else that we haven't covered, David, that you think we should be talking about? <laughs> He's looking like, no? <laughs> no. <laughs> Have we covered the hydration side? And, you know, I mean, it's, it's sort of basic to a certain extent, but is there anything else you want to add to that? Like, yeah, I get a question. Uh, there are many emails to our company, like... <laughs> how much water do we need to, to give to our, like in one portion? Yeah. And because on the label, we, we just describe how much, how much of the recovery powder, but mm. not the water. No, you and don't. Thing, <laughs> yeah. And the thing is like as much as a dog can drink in one, you, you, you don't want to leave the recovery mixed on a sun outside. Mm. Like, the dog should empty the bowl, you know? Yeah. So you you give them give them as much water as they will drink in a one go. And just, so yeah. that's the answer to the yeah. how much how, how to mix the recovery. And that's a very individual thing, isn't it? That would depend on Yeah, I mean yeah. you 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 learn from your dog. You try maybe uh first time you give too much water next time not enough but you get your like measure yeah and i think that's true and especially it probably varies when you do different things as well doesn't it so i know when i come back from racing she's like she she wants more um yeah so that's that's a good good question and a good answer yeah. so thank you for that <laughs> yeah and so, also with the recovery i'm not so like yeah we we, we have a 
like a measuring spoon and uh, precise grams because that's the legislation you you have to write it on the label. Yeah. But I'm not that precise when I feed my dogs. Like I just scoop it one, maybe they they were good dogs. They get one and a half. (laughs) And that's it. Because even like with a kibble for normal dog food, you don't count every, every piece that they're the same every day. You, you scoop with a, with a measure, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's same yeah. with the recovery. You need, you, you don't need to be so precise about the grams. It's not medicine. So. It's not going to do them any harm, is it? The- yeah. It's, it's like, uh, if you drink, one or two beers, what's the difference? No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What is the difference? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's very true. That's brilliant, actually. Um, because I think we do get hung up a bit on it. And I think one of the things when I first bought your product, David, was that it was that actual thing. Well, how much water do I put with this? So now we all know. So that's um, yeah. so that's so that's good to hear. So brilliant. Yeah. So just tell, uh, Michelle, have you got anything else? Sorry. I was just going to ask where our listeners can buy your products. Is it via, is it via the, your website? Is that how they would get hold of it? Or do you stock anywhere in the UK? Just a second. I know Snowpaw's store. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes. Snowpaw's store is our distributor for UK market. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. there's the way to get it. Yeah. Brilliant. So, yeah, if you go and follow them on social media, they've got that. Um, But brilliant. So where can people follow you, David, and your adventures? Or uh, um, are you you on social media as? (laughs) I try not to be too much. (laughs) (laughs) But Mahmoud is on social media. I know that. Yeah, I try not to be too much. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, my company's on Facebook, my company's on Instagram. But lately I don't check too much the social media. The 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 company staff are doing the social managers. Uh my personal staff is <laughs> left <laughs> alone. <laughs> yeah. We'll so put we'll put the details for your we'll put the details for your company one uh in the show. Okay. So we'll do that. But um, and yes, I can confirm that uh, you do have social media managers. <laughs> but that's brilliant. So that's fantastic. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much, David, for your time um, and coming up to our first European um, podcast. So that's brilliant. You had something you like a first. Yeah, so hope, hope you've enjoyed. Do let us know and we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>